Okay, welcome back. And what we're going to do now is uh, write some code for our uh, robot so we can actually see it working. We've, we've done, we've, we've uh, created these subsystems, the uh, drivetrain, the elevator, the wrist, and the claw. Now we want to write some code so we can see them operating. Um, so let's, let's do that. What, you, what we want everyone to know is that there are two kinds of things in Robot Builder or in this command-based programming model that we use. One of them are subsystems, and subsystems define the components of the robot, all these mechanisms with all their uh, actuators and sensors. And the other thing is commands. And commands define the behavior over time for the subsystems. So the first command we want to do is to, uh, uh, we'll do an easy one, we'll open and close the Excuse me, we'll open and close the claw. So we'll make some commands to open and close the claw. So that's um, open claw, and then we'll do close claw. Now you'll notice that when we do these, we say that, the, that these commands require the claw. And what that means is it requires the claw subsystem, because you can't have two commands running, one trying to open the claw, one trying to close the claw at the same time. So uh, by saying that they both require the claw, if one of them is scheduled, uh, and then you try and schedule the other one, it will kick out the first one and it will run the second one. So we haven't talked about how things get scheduled or what all that stuff is about, but we'll, we'll do that a little bit later. So now we're just going to generate Java code with our new commands, and we're going to write the code to get the claw to open and close. So in order to do that, before we write the code for the commands, we first have to get the subsystem to be able to get the motor moving in the open and close direction. So we're going to do that first by just adding a few methods to the claw subsystem to um, get it moving in the open direction and getting it moving in the closed direction. Now, if you remember from looking at the live window, to get the claw opening, we use a value of 1. To get the claw closing, we use a value of uh, minus 1. So minus 1 is full one direction, 1 is full the other direction, 0 is stopped. If you're using a bigger motor, like, like from the FRC kit, you probably don't want to do full speed in any direction. Maybe you do. It depends on the motors. But you got to be really careful and just make sure that you're not um, overdriving the motors and, and breaking things. So stop to zero. So it sets the speed to zero. And now th those are all the things that the claw can do. It can either be opening, it can be closing, or it can be stopped. And there's no other choices. So we're done with that. And now let's look at the close claw command. Now each of these commands is a class, just like subsystems. So you can see that there's close claw. It extends command, and it's got a constructor where we're saying it requires the uh, claw, which we talked about before. And now to initialize it, when this command is scheduled, um, its initialize method is called. So this initializes this command and gets it ready to start running. And to do that, we start the claw closing. So we call the close method on the claw subsystem, and it gets it moving in the close direction. Um, now, how long do we close it for? Well, if you remember, the claw had no feedback. So we're just going to close it for about one second and that will be enough time. So we're going to set a timeout of one second on this command. And then you'll notice there's an execute and an isFinished method. Those get called repeatedly while the command is running. And so every 20 milliseconds or so, the execute and isFinished method gets called over and over again. So the initialize gets called when it starts. Then execute and isFinish keeps getting called over and over again. And isFinished returns a Boolean value, which is true or false. And so we're returning is timed out. That's a method which is part of commands and it tells whether or not our timeout has run out or not. Now once it's finished, the end method is called, and what the end method does is it, um, uh, that's, that's where you need to clean up after the, after the command is finished. So we want to stop the motors from running. And then the last uh, method that's in the command is interrupted, and that's used to, um, uh, when, the, when this particular command is interrupted by another command that refers to the same subsystem. So if the claw was closing, and then we did the open claw command, then the interrupted method would be called on close. Okay, now we're going to do, for open claw, we're basically going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to set the timeout again. Uh, this time, uh, we're going to set the timeout for nine tenths of a second, because we happen to know that it opens a little more quickly than it closes. Uh, well, for initialize, uh, the initialize method, we're going to get the claw moving in the open direction, and the is finished is the same. It's got this timeout. So that's pretty easy. And the end method, again, just stops the claw from moving by calling the stop method on the subsystem. 
And then the interrupted method just calls the end method, which will uh, stop the claw from moving. So we've now defined the behavior of the claw. There's really two things the claw can do. It can either open or close. And, uh, and, and if it's opening, it does it for nine-tenths of a second. If it's closing, it does it for one second. So we've, we've written those commands. We're downloading the code in the robot. And now we want to test this. So normally, if you're writing a robot program, in order to test this stuff, what you would want to do um, to test it is, is, to, uh, see, is to write some sample code to make sure that the claw works. And you'd see, write some test programs, and you would you'd, uh, put them in there. But right now, we're not going to do that, because the code is automatically generated um, by the robot builder to uh, do this for you. So you'll notice now, the robot just came up. If we look at the driver station, um, we can see that it's, uh, that it's running. And we enable it, and these two commands show up on the Smart Dashboard. There's an open claw and a closed claw button that showed up on the Smart Dashboard. And those correspond to those two commands we just created. So if we press uh, open claw, the open claw button, it's going to open. It's going to do that for nine tenths of a second. If we press close claw, it's going to do that for one second. So we've now tested those two commands. So we now know that the claw is working. We can move on to something else. So we can move on to the next thing. So what's the next thing? Let's do something harder. Okay, so let's do the elevator and the list because they have the uh, PID with the sensor. Okay, so uh, let's do the elevator first. Now the elevator's got two things it wants to be able to do. One of them is it wants to be able to go um, uh, to the to the lower position, and then it also wants to be able to go to the upper position. So for lower, what we're doing is it's such a common operation to just drive a subsystem to its set points, uh, a PID subsystem to its set points, that we added that to the robot builder and it kind of does that for you. So we've added these set point commands. Uh, here's another one for raise elevator. Okay, that requires the elevator, and the set point in this case is 1.5. So those are the two. Those are the two set point values that we determined earlier using the live window. Now we'll do the same thing for the uh, lower wrist and then the upper raise wrist. And so those require the wrist. Um, and then we put in the two set point values. And and that's really it. By scheduling these commands, um, it's going to move the wrist of the elevator to our two predetermined positions. And and still we haven't really written much code yet. I mean this is this is pretty nice. Um, and, and we're just about ready to go. So, so really, this lets us focus on, um, on on more complicated parts of the program, like vision and things like that, and while and you know aiming uh, shooters and stuff. So we're not done yet. There's one more thing we need to do. What do we have to do? We need to actually set the PID values we found in Robot Builder. So we wrote these values down earlier from playing with the live windows, so and I was put them in to the PID subsystems. So five was the PID value, and now these commands are going to want to run until the PID system hits its target. In other words, when the uh, actual value from the potentiometer hits our set point value, within some tolerance, we want to be able to stop uh, the command and move on to the next command in case you're doing multiple commands one after another. And so we set a set point of five hundredths, which corresponds to five hundredths of a volt. Tolerance, not set point. Oh, sorry, yeah, tolerance. So the tolerance is set to 0 0.05, five hundredths of a volt, and that's how close it needs to be. And now we'll set the tolerance uh, for the elevator also to 5 hundredths of a volt, and we'll set the uh, proportional value to 20, because we found that to be a good value earlier. And right. let's uh, generate code. Okay, so we can go back to NetBeans, and now we can see all these commands are there. We can just uh, go ahead and, and uh, run the robot program. Okay, and uh, again, uh, oh, if you look at this, we can see there's the code. Uh, that the robot builder generated. So in its initialized method, it enabled the PID controller for the PID subsystem, and then it set the set point to 1.5. And then in the isFinish method, it's looking to see that the PID subsystem is on target, and that's based on that tolerance that we put in before. So the program is just about done loading, and we can go to the uh, smart dashboard, turn the camera back on so we can see the robot and make sure it's working. And uh, it's almost there, and there we go. So look, our, our new commands show up in the Smart Dashboard. So now we can just try these things. So we know open claw and close claw work. Now we can try lower elevator and raise elevator. So let's give those a try. All right. It's already raised, so let's try lower. Yeah. So let's try it. Let's see if we can pick up this elliptical object and put it on the waist platform. Okay. So we have to lower the elevator first. You have to enable the robot in the driver's station. 
Okay, now we have to open the claw. So we open the claw. We okay, put the cylindrical object in place. We close the claw. And then at the same time, we raise the elevator and we raise the lid. Yeah, that same time thing is pretty cool. Because when you're writing autonomous code, you often don't have a lot of time. You want this to go really fast. Like if you're shooting balls, you want those balls to get into the baskets in a hurry. You don't want to be doing things sequentially if you don't have to. So uh, the commands can run at the same time. And what happens when two commands are running at the same time is that it just repeatedly calls the execute and is finished methods on each of the commands that are running simultaneously until one of them is finished and then it goes on to the next command. So uh, those things seem to work. Oh, let's have the robot drive forward because we want the whole object of this is to get the cylindrical object on top of the platform. So robot's driving forward. Okay, there we go. We'll write the driving code later. Yep, so then we lower the list, open the claw, raise the list, and close the claw, and the robot backs up. Not bad. So now you get an idea of how to write commands and how to test them. The really cool thing about this, as we said before, and you really this is like really important, is that you can test these commands individually. You don't have to uh, write a whole program to try all of this stuff. You can just start writing commands, and as you do it, you can just test them. Now 